So let's go ahead and just finish up uh, parallel processing and feature detection, which are, is going to be the last part of the vision uh, discussion for today. So, um, and these, these are just dealing with being able to actually perceive, right, um, the, these, these photons of light, these objects that are uh, reaching our eye. You know, we, won't, we don't want to just be able to sense them, but, you know, to relate with our environment, we need to perceive and process them. So parallel processing and, fe and feature detection are what allow us to, um, to do this. So a couple of things here. Um, there are three main characteristics that we're going to be uh, analyzing when a photon of light or when, an when we're looking at an object and analyzing it. And they are color, shape, and motion. So color. What, what, what do we talk about? What allows us to see color? Good, the cones. And we won't go too into depth right now on that because we already uh, talked about that uh, previously. So yeah, cones are what allow us to see color. Okay, now shape. Uh, shape is made possible um, by what are called the parvocellular cells. Big, it's a Long word, mouthful, I know, but uh, that's what helps us to um, see the shape or the boundaries of an object. So I write up the boundaries. So for example, if you are looking, if you're doing some bird watching, and you uh, see a bird resting on a limb in a tree, which is in front of a house, which is on a mountain, right? What allows you to see the boundaries of the bird uh, from the tree, from the house, from the mountain? Well, this, these, this is the parvocellular cells. So parvocellular cells. Um, and the parvocellular cells have a very high spatial resolution. So spatial resolution. And spatial resolution is referring to the, it's referring to physical space. Uh, or, you know, what's the smallest feature of an object you can see? And, uh, for example, if, uh, you know, a CT scan has a spatial resolution of 10 to the negative third meters or one millimeter. Whereas, in, in, uh, you know, something like an electron or, or a light microscope would have anywhere from 10 to the negative six or 10 to the negative ninth uh, meter. So, um, you know, a, a, an electron microscope would have a much a uh, higher sp spatial resolution. Um, and then lastly here, so motion. And motion is going to be made possible by the magnocellular cells. So if something's moving, uh, we're not using our parvocellular cells because these only allow us to see the fine details of an object. But they have um, so let me write it like this. They have very high spatial resolution, but very low temporal resolution. And temporal resolution is referring to time. So, you know, some video cameras can film 30 frames a second. Other very high speed video cameras can film about 10,000 frames per second. You know, and those that can film 10,000 have a very high temporal resolution. Uh, but with the parvocellular cells, that's not the case. They have very high spatial resolution, uh, but they have very low temporal resolution. Now, the magnocellular cells, they do have high temporal resolution. So again, this is what is going to allow us to see that bird as the bird takes flight off of that branch and starts flying. It's going to allow us to see that bird as it moves. We wouldn't be using any more of the parvocellular cells, so it would be a very blurry, uh, but it would be a moving object or a moving image of that of that bird. Uh, but the magnocellular cells, they do have low spatial resolution, and that's what um, does not allow us to see a clear picture of the bird. And um, you can kind of think about this in terms of you know if you're trying to film something as well, and, and you want to film the very uh, fine details of an object, well, you better probably put the camera on a tripod so it doesn't move at all. Uh, because once you start moving it, uh, then you can't, you, can't act, you can't use these parvocellular cells, 
um, or for a camera, you can't use that, that feature of the camera. Uh, so this only works with stationary objects. So I think of parvo cellular cells, or the parvo pathway, the object must be parked, uh, if you want to remember it that way, or stationary. Whereas uh, for motion, you're using the magnocellular cells. Well, I think M for motion. So magno, just think motion. <clears throat> and again, so if you're trying to film something that's moving, well, you know, with, even with a camera, uh, you're going to be able to film the object, but it won't be nearly as clear as if you were have that, you know, camera on a tripod filming something that's not moving. Um, and then just the ability for us to simultaneously process color, shape, and motion, um, and then be able to relay this to our memory stores and be able to put together the pieces of the puzzle and figure out what we're looking at. You know, is it a bird, a dog, a person, whatever? Um, you know, and being able to do this at the same time is what parallel processing is referring to. So we're processing multiple things at the uh, same time. So again, these are just the different features that we're going to be detecting of, of objects. And, and being able to do that at the same time is, is the parallel processing. Uh, questions on that? So that was vision, guys. Sweet. <laughs>